Good morning, everybody. I'm gonna take you downstairs with me and I'm gonna check my ketones. And then today, I'm gonna to show you what I eat in a day on a high fat Dr. Boz ratio. So we'll get to that in just a minute. With every star, we are born again. Open your heart. Spend this time in your head. Okay. Let's head downstairs. Oh, I don't have a I need a selfie stick right now. I don't have a selfie stick yet. My kitchen's probably a disaster. It's not bad. It's actually not terrible. And it's gorgeous outside. So, I'm gonna take you guys over to the breakfast table with me. And I will do my, eh, I'll do them right here. I'll do them right here in the kitchen. Ooh, it's wet, why is it wet? Don't know why it's wet. There we go. I have a sink full of dishes, but that's because that's full of clean dishes and they need to be put away. Let me go grab my Keto Mojo and clean up the liquid on the counter. So I'm gonna take my ketone and glucose readings. This is my Keto Mojo. Um, I'm working on getting an affiliate with them. I just don't have it yet, but it is linked down below in my Amazon store under Dr. Boz. So there's my meter, and it does both ketones and glucose. If you're wanting to see what your insulin is doing, your metabolic health, then you're gonna wanna check both, not just one or the other. And blood is more accurate because it's telling you what your body is currently doing, not the waste products, which is urine and breath. So it depends on what you're going for. If you don't really care, you just wanna know that you're in ketosis or that you've made ketones, period, then blood or urine are gonna be perfectly fine because you obviously will have made them and then they are being wasted. I do my glucose first because it reads faster. I use one meter for both. I won't push it down until I'm ready because I've pricked my finger but I get it all set up. I get both my strips ready so that I can switch it out real fast and then do my blood. Now, I am going to point the camera down so that you guys can see what I do. If you get squeamish and a drop of blood is enough to make you wanna faint, then you're gonna wanna skip over this part because that's all that's gonna be there is one little drop but I wanted to warn you, just in case. That's all set up. And then my other strip is ready right here. I'm going to prick my finger. I usually do it right on the side. Hopefully that's enough. Then I push it down in so it starts up. I'm just gonna soak some up. Okay, 84. I am not surprised. I ended up having to suck on a cough drop last night because my throat was itching so bad. So I figured my numbers would be pretty messy this morning. And then 3.3. .3. So what you would do is you would take the glucose divided by the ketones. Um, I also have an app that will tell me what my GKI is. So you can look at the Keto Mojo app, they'll give you the GKI, but it's a good way to track your numbers. So I will um, pop it up right over here so that you guys can see what that looks like. And then to get your Dr. Boz ratio, you would just divide the ketones uh, into the glucose. So glucose divided by ketones gives you your Dr. Boz ratio, and that tells you what you're doing for the day. So now it is 
10.30. I'm gonna go ahead and make my fatty coffee. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that because I have gotten rid of the collagen powder. So uh, it's a little bit different than it used to be. I'll show you how I make that. And I'm gonna suck on that for like 30 minutes and then I will eat my food and I will show you what that's gonna look like for the day. All right, so for my coffee into my Yeti, I put one whole egg. About one and a half tablespoons of butter. Like, I don't know, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. You can use MCT oil or coconut oil. Um, I do about a tablespoon and a half. Eyeballs uh, for everything. Then I take my immersion blender. This one is, I don't know, uh, 10 years old, probably. Stick it down in there and then I blend it while I pour. Oh, I forgot my iodine. Let me get my iodine. Now I'm ready. There we go. Then, while you're blending, you pour. we go that is my nice creamy fatty coffee I only have one a day I sometimes don't even want the one a day but that's how I get my iodine in so until I find a new way that's what I do all right so I'm going to drink my coffee while I go around and do all of my chores uh, feeding animals releasing creatures from captivity from overnight and being kept safe so I can take you guys with me while I go around and do that and then we will get to breakfast lunch whatever it is as soon as I get hungry apparently the uh, fireplace table has become a catch-all good morning little nasty duckies yeah yeah, you guys are gross. Good morning, doggies. Okay. I don't have anything for you. Not yet. Excuse me, everybody. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, that's helpful. goodness oh somebody laid their very first egg it's so tiny 
It looks like a quail egg. I've never seen one that small before. Oh my gosh. That's a typical chicken egg. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's adorable. Why well, have laying boxes when you get quarters? Alrighty, so it's after our meeting from the Mighty Network. Just now getting lunch going. Um, I put my temperature probe in there. The salmon's a little frozen still, but that's okay. I put this little silicone mat down. I put three pieces of salmon in here, and now I'm going to sprinkle them. I sprayed them with olive oil. You could use coconut oil, you could use butter, you could use whatever you wanted. So I sprayed them with a little bit of oil and now I am going to do seasonings on them and then air fry them. All right, I did garlic, onion powder, Parmesan, and now Italian seasoning. Now I'm gonna air fry this at 400 degrees until it reaches 110, which is medium rare, and then I will pan fry it to sear it up and get it crispy. While the salmon is cooking, I am going to make some hollandaise sauce while it rains and thunders outside. Hopefully I don't lose power. So you're going to take a half a cup of butter. And then melt that down for about a minute so that it's hot. While that's heating up. I'm going to separate my eggs. Okay. All right, then the recipe um, from the website that I found online, which I'll link down below so that you can see who actually came up with this. Uh, it calls for one tablespoon of lemon, but I'm doing just one packet of true lemon. They call for one teaspoon of Dijon. I'm going to do French's because that's what I have. One pinch of cayenne per their instructions. There we go. A tiny splash. And now to blend the same way I made the coffee this morning. Yes, I know, hot liquid, plastic cup. There we go. There is the hollandaise sauce. So I'm gonna let that cool off while my salmon finishes cooking. All right, this is going off. Let me check on those, pull them out. All right, you can leave it like this or you can sear it up a little bit in a hot skillet so that you can crisp, crisp up the skin side. I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna put a little bit more Parmesan in the pan get it hot and then set this on top of it to give it a crust on both sides. So into my pan, I'm gonna put some butter, turn that on.
I'm going to sprinkle some more Parmesan down into the bottom. Wait for that to get nice and bubbly and crispy. Now it's bubbling, I'm going to put the salmon right on top of it. The mask that I have to make it nice and easy to get it up out of the fry basket. There we go, now let's let that cook. It hasn't been very long. It's long enough to kind of crisp up the crisp up the cheese. Now I'm gonna pull it off and plate it. Now add about a third of the sauce on top and enjoy. All right, there's my my slightly separated hollandaise sauce. Honestly, I think next time thunder. I think next time I'm probably going to pasteurize the yolks like I do for the mayonnaise because that seems to help it not fail. So definitely going to do that next time. But uh, this is my six ounces of salmon with the hollandaise sauce and the parmesan. So I will stick up what my day looks like up until this point right here. And then I'll show you what I decide to eat after this for like a dessert type thing. So I'm going to go enjoy this now. I'll be, I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys. So it was very interesting. Right after I hit end recording, um, lightning struck the house and I missed it on my phone, which totally stinks. But, uh, Bella was sitting over there at the table and I was standing right here and I was eating and then my alarm just went off. I saw a really bright flash and the big giant boom, my watch completely turned off, like reset itself. And my arm is still tingling just a tiny bit and my feet, the bottom of my feet are tingling. It's been an interesting day to say the least. It is 4.15. Um, I didn't want to eat for a little while. <laughs> I'm gonna eat now and believe it or not, I'm gonna eat salad. I had a small one ounce salad yesterday to see how I handled it. Just to see how I did. I was down another pound overnight. So I'm guessing I handled it just fine. I've had no other negative side effects. This is the butter, the sweet and crunchy butter lettuce blend. So I'm going to try like two whole ounces of this today, along with two slices of smokehouse cheddar. I'm gonna put a couple of cheese slices on that. I mean, I, I could grate cheese, but we have a million of those and not a lot of gratable cheese. So I'm just gonna crumble it up on top. And then this is my homemade ranch dressing with sour cream and mayonnaise and then spices and things like that. I'm gonna do probably like three tablespoons of this. And then for dessert, I'm going to make myself some egg waffles and put some butter on top of those and eat that. I'm gonna finish that all in the next probably 30 minutes. Definitely eating later than I had anticipated or planned on, but life. So. Um, I would rather get my food in a little bit too late than not get my food in at all. You guys know, coming from the under eating background, um, I need to make sure that I stay on top of making sure to get my calories in. So that is my plan. That is what I'm going to do. And uh, I will pop up the macros so you guys can see what my whole day looked like. Some days I'll do two fatty coffees. Some days I'll only do one. Uh, I don't usually do salmon 
usually it's a burger or a breakfast sandwich or something like that but i wanted to show you that you can eat something that is super lean on this diet you just have to find ways of getting creative to add the fat to it so if you wanted to do chicken or if you wanted to do a lean cut of beef you would still be able to add fat to it with sauces and dips and things like that so i hope that this gives you guys some ideas of what you can do for food in a day of the high fat diet and thankfully my power is okay and, and everything's good. I'm actually going to go call the electric company to make sure that they know just in case they need to know anything. So leave me any questions down below or any suggestions for anyone that is looking for ideas to be able to make on their high fat Dr. Boz ratios. And I will see you guys on the way. I could put you back up now. And I am just now getting, um, oh, I did, no dogs, no, Oh my gosh, you guys are ridiculous. That is two ounces of lettuce right there. It's actually a lot of lettuce. So that's two ounces. Trukin, move your head, bud. Thanks, little love. You're welcome. They're still noisy, huh?